Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you know, this channel is all about holistic healing and body, mind and soul connection. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would request you to do that so that you don't miss out on any important information which is coming through this channel. So today's video is all about leaky gut. Yes, a much less talked about but a very common phenomenon where our small intestine actually has problem in digesting food. And what are the different symptoms? The symptoms can be excessive bloating, excessive flatulence. It can be abdominal pain and cramps. You start feeling discomfort after having food, which can further lead to issues like allergies, depression, uneasiness, even lack of socializing. So what exactly happens in the leaky gut? So our small intestine actually has 4,000 square feet of area where there are very tiny small cells present on the lining of the intestine. These are called epithelial cells. As you can see in the picture, these epithelial cells are supposed to be very tightly bound together. However, in some cases, these cells become a little loose. They are not tightly bound. As a result, a leaky gut and these epithelial cells have moved away from each other then even the bad proteins even the bigger molecule of proteins or toxins which are not desired by the uh, by the body they also start entering into our bloodstream as a result the immune system starts getting triggered and it can lead to symptoms like bloating, excessive gas, discomfort, abdominal pain, and so on, and even skin allergies or depression or even other mental problems. As we know, body, mind, and soul, all three of these are very, very interconnected. So first, let us talk about the things which actually trigger a leaky gut. Number one being processed foods. So anything that comes in a packet uses a lot of artificial... I myself am from the food industry and I know the kind of ingredients that go into food products. Most of the ingredients, you can't even read them. And, these, uh, and the companies use artificial flavors, chemicals, preservatives to keep the food stable for longer. Have you even wondered how come a small cupcake in a in a packet doesn't get spoiled whereas if you buy it from a fresh bakery then you know the shelf life is three or four days. So these processed foods and these chemicals are definitely not helping your digestive system. Number two high fat foods. Again I hear I'm not talking about good fats like coconut oil, olive oil or ghee. This is something you can easily use in your uh, kitchen but I'm talking about refined vegetable oil, hydrogenated fats. Again they have been processed so much to, uh, to give them stability uh, but these are not good for your body. Number, number three high sugar foods. Here again, I'm not talking about natural sugar which comes through fruits, through dates, through coconut sugar, palm sugar, but I'm talking about the refined white sugar which is used in desserts, cakes, pastries, your soda. Soda is one of the worst forms which actually triggers the whole microbiome in the gut. So it's an absolute no-no. Number four, uh, Quit your smoking and reduce your alcohol. Alcohol is uh, has been studied to increase the permeability of your intestinal wall and triggers the leaky gut. Number five would be the food families that trigger allergies like gluten and lactose. If your body is sensitive to either gluten or dairy, then Consuming them is going to trigger the phenomenon of leaky gut and cause discomfort, cause uneasiness, flatulence, uh, abdominal pains, cramps, even leading to autoimmune diseases. So you have to be very sensitive about gluten and dairy intake. Now we come to what do we need to do to address the leaky gut. Number one, you can increase your intake of high fiber foods. These high fiber foods, it's more like a broom, you know, it, it helps you to uh, clearing your intestines. So you need to have a good intake of fiber uh, in your daily consumption of food. 
These days is a lot of fad about high protein diet and having egg, fish and chicken uh, as you know majority portion of your diet but that is absolutely not okay you need to have a balance of macronutrients and one of the uh, one of the most ignored macronutrient is is fiber you need to balance out the fiber through good consumption of fruits vegetables and legumes number 2 You can use probiotics in your diet to improve the gut flora. These probiotics are how do I know what's a probiotic? They are usually fermented foods which are very sour and tangy in taste such as um sauerkraut, uh, kefir, kombucha, uh yogurt, uh, and cultured foods and uh, especially if anything is cultured from a spot that's even better because they tend to colonize much better in the intestine. So you can use uh, these probiotics after food. These fermented foods actually help in improving the gut flora, the microbiome in the intestine, which helps you to tighten these epithelial cells back together, thereby stopping the permeability of unwanted bacteria, toxins or bigger proteins into the bloodstream. Number 3, you reduce your alcohol intake because it triggers the permeability it, it increases the permeability of your gut lining number 4 reduce the sugar intake so i'm not talking about the sugar which is found in fruits but again a direct form of refined sugar when you consume it is it is known to help the bad bacteria inside inside your intestines now when these bad bacteria are fed with sugar they become overactive and they Uh, they start contributing towards moving your epithelial cells even further apart and this is definitely not good if you already are struggling with a leaky gut last step and which is the most complicated one is if you know that you are intolerant to glucose or lactose uh, and maybe even if you don't know it yet you can try an elimination diet by removing the gluten from your diet and removing the dairy from your diet for 2 weeks uh now dairy meaning uh yogurt paneer cottage cheese any form of cheese milk or any milk derived substitutes from cow's milk and you can eliminate it for 2 weeks and see if your symptoms have eased if you feel that way then after 2 weeks you can gradually bring back one of these either gluten or lactose not both at the same time to see whether whether that particular family of food was causing you troubles and if you feel that was the case then it is important to reduce gluten or lactose whichever has been the irritant in your case it is important to have it in moderate consumption and reduce it as much as possible in your diet so that's all in this video about the leaky gut phenomenon and if you like the content then please hit the like button at the bottom of the video I have also shared some resources in the comments section uh which talk about how can you help address the leaky gut at home if if you think any of your friends can benefit from this please feel free to share and subscribe to the channel this is all about holistic wellness and mind body and soul connection i'll keep bringing you more holistic tips on different subjects related to holistic living